you talked about approaching life as if it's chapters. And, and one of the things that kind of stood out to me looking at your background, I'm sure maybe looking back, it seems linear. But from the outside looking in, it, it does not seem linear at all. And, and so some of the questions that bubble to mind is, you know, one, how have you thought about and approached your career? And part of the reason I'm asking that is I'm a big fan of nonlinear careers, but I think a lot of people think there's risk in doing that. So I just love it. If you could share your experience on how you've approached your career and the moves within it. Gosh, I wish it was planned. Uh, it was <laughs> not planned. Um, I think there's a couple of, of things that I only in hindsight am I able to look back on and and find as kind of threads you know one is to double down on what you're good at I know we're supposed to understand our blind spots and work on our weaknesses but ultimately you're most successful in what you're good at Um, and the places where I've had the most trouble in my career are when I was doing something that not what that was stretching me but actually was just not what I was good at like the majority of my day wasn't what I was good at and we all know that. I mean, I was, you know, I was president of my sorority. I was president of my senior class. Like I've always been in sales. I mean, that's what those jobs are. They're social and they're in sales. And guess what investing is? It's the biggest sales job there is. You know, you're selling founders and you're selling the next round of funders. Um, and so I think recognizing that that has always, you know, leaning into what you're naturally good at and go back to your childhood and say, you know, what are those things that I gravitate to, I think is one of it. I think the second piece that I didn't plan for and wish I had planned for is I always knew that having a family was important to me. And actually when the um, the new, as this is maybe a decade ago, the new dean of Harvard Business School, my alma mater, um, you know, came into town and was, you know, meeting one-on-one with some alumni and, you know, he said, you know, do you have any advice? And I said, I think we're doing a disservice to this next generation of business leaders by not talking about the personal life and, and life choices they want to make. Every case, whether it was at Stanford Business School, Harvard Business School, never touched upon the leader's personal life. And by not talking about your personal life, you are doing a disservice to folks to not have them think about those decisions in concert with their professional life. And I don't think I would have chosen a different career. I was always bound for business. Uh, but I think it was only in reaction to, wait, you know, I have three kids. I have a husband who works all the time. Like, how are we going to do this? It was reactionary versus planned. And so it's not a gender issue. It's not being a mom or a dad. And I, in some ways, it's been a wonderful byproduct of COVID that everyone has been starting to think about this integration of work and life. It's not about balance. It's about integration. And so I, I do believe that I ended up making choices because I was thinking about how to integrate the two. But I do wish I would have had a better lens at a younger age to predict forward, which also then dovetails with this 70-year career notion, which is if you're living to 100, I've got a 70-year work life. Not everything has to be done at age 28 or 29. And so I do, um, I'm happy I have the perspective I have now at being almost 48 of what my next 30 years of my career is going to be, because I'm looking at it from this life work integration and how to think about it. But I would definitely, I don't know if that answers your question, but I do think that it's something that by default I had to do, um, but wish that there was more um, uh, predetermination with it. Yeah. 